one of the few games I remember where the D linemen were getting penetration in the backfield for your backs or whatever. Were they doing something different this game, or were you guys doing something different? Because I didn't really see that all season. Their, their defense? Their defense would meet the back in the back. Yeah, look, and, and that was one area. That's one of the areas that, you know, we had a – they had a number of TFLs on us. They had about seven of them, which is too much, uh, and that 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 hurts, you know. And I can tell you when you're when you're in Ben's seat and you know you call a, a first down run and you lose three, and now you're second and thirteen. Those are tough, you know. Um, so there were. Now I, look, I'm going to give those guys credit too. Now um, they've got two of the best ends in the league. One of them is is I think the best rusher in the league, and that's Parsons. And the other ninety, you know. You can't sleep on this guy. And I don't think any of us slept on him, but but I think people forget he's a complete defensive end, man. He plays the run, he's stout, he's explosive, and he can rush the passer. So he got those two guys. 97 is disruptive. So that front, man, they got speed and violence. Uh, well, good, good, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, with Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you all are going to have a great Taco Tuesday. It is, wow, it's already Tuesday. We got good news, of course, because the Cowboys are facing the Commanders with the opportunity to win the number two seed in the NFC, having possibly two home games in Dallas and will be facing the commander's team that is in disarray playing for draft picks. Um, we will be tailgating there and we got great news because the weather was originally the long range forecast had rain slash snow forecasted for Sunday. Now the longer range forecasts actually have sunny and 44 degrees. So come join us. Um, the If you go to the community tab, there is uh, ticket information. If you need to get tickets, uh, we'll be in the red zone lot. Um, there's a contact person, but if you are going to go or want to go, you need to take care of this today before the tickets are gone. We have a block of 60 tickets that were reserved. And I don't know how many are already sold, but after today, they'll be releasing those to sell to other people because it's a hot potato and they don't want to get stuck holding them. So... You just heard Dan Campbell talking about Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons. Could you imagine how disruptive Micah Parsons would be if they actually called the holding calls? You know, I am tired of hearing everybody talk about how the Cowboys always get so many advantages. When you look at the pictures, and it's not like it's not like it's uh, Bigfoot and there's no real pictures. You can see it. We see it every single week. And yet, somehow, some way, they never get any calls. Never. Nine games. So I don't want to hear about we're getting all these advantages because the Lions tried to play a little trickery there and confuse the officials. Bottom line. That shit happens in football. We can't change because people are sitting here. Somebody actually came to me and said, hey, the NFL is discussing giving the Lions a two-point conversion. That would work possibly if it was a walk-away two-point conversion, but there was still 23 seconds on the clock, and the Cowboys still had a timeout. And we have one of the best kickers in football who could have kicked a 65-yard field goal. So you had 23 seconds. If you let it be a touchback, that means the ball's on the 25. So you'd only need about... 27 yards, 27 yards, and the way C.D. Lamb was feasting all night, the Cowboys could have gotten in field goal range to win the game. That's a hypothetical. Or, if they're going to give, if they were going to give the two points to Detroit, how about you give us back that 15-yard penalty that you charged on Peyton Hendershot that was actually on Aiden, uh, Hutchinson? Yeah, because they called it the wrong way, and that cost us 30 yards because it should have been 30 yards for us and a first down versus 25, excuse me, first and 25 for us and losing yardage. But be that as it may, nothing's going to change on that one. Uh, the commissioner talking about that or people talking about that is just trying to, you know, appease the masses. But what I want to talk about here is Demarcus Lawrence. Now, you know, when anybody gets paid with the Cowboys, 
everybody always goes, they're not worth the money, man. They're overpaid. Get rid of this guy. And we've had a couple of years, um, specifically I'll say 2020, where people looked and said, he costs too much money, man. He's a bum. He's a bust. And unfortunately, people look at um, basically one thing when they think of defensive players. They look at sacks and interceptions. And if you're not making a whole lot of sacks, then you suck. That's the problem that we have with, say, uh, one technique guys or nose tackles is people will look at the numbers and they see 20 tackles and three sacks and they say that guy sucks, not understanding what the job and the role is for him. His job is not to make the sacks. It's not to make the tackles. His job is to occupy space and keep the guards from getting to the linebackers. That's what he's getting paid for. It doesn't show up in the stats. And Demarcus Lawrence, who, you know, he only has four sacks in a year. A lot of people look at that and say, he sucks, man. Demarcus Lawrence, he's got four sacks. He stinks. But see, his role in here is being the run-stopping defensive end. As Dan Campbell just put it right there, he is a complete defensive end. And quite frankly, he is one of our best run-stoppers. And so you put him with Micah Parsons, who gets to the quarterback and gets all the pressures, with D-Law, who is getting long in the tooth, you have to understand, D-Law has been with the Cowboys since 2014. He's not a spring chicken anymore. And you feel like a sense of urgency for him. And the thing about football is you're always one play away from being retired. And I think between him and Tyron Smith, they know that opportunities, having been in the league as long as they have, are few and far between. And I will say that this is probably the best opportunity that the Cowboys have had in a very long, long time. 2013, yeah, we had a great team. It was just really, really young. Really young. And we didn't have the defense like we do right now. 2014, um, we had an incredible offense. Uh, our defense was lacking. That was when our defense was just beginning to get turned around from 2013 being the worst defense in football to being about the 19th rated defense that was second in taking away the football. May <clears throat> Maybe you could say the 2017, uh, the team that was ended up being that the we had the botched uh, hold on the field goal, that that team had 13 pro bowlers on it. We had all pros on the offense and the defense. You could probably look and say that that team should have. Unfortunately, the Giants came through us and bitch slapped us. But at the moment, as I look at the NFC right now, I know everybody thinks San Francisco is a juggernaut and you know that they've already punched their card. I know 49er fans feel like that. But having the opportunity, and I'm going to say opportunity, I'm not counting these chickens until, uh, until they hatch, having the opportunity to get the division and possibly host a couple of playoff games if we win the first one is huge. And there's no guarantees that San Francisco wins their games. I know everybody's got it. You know, Kyle Shanahan is, is the genius and everything else, but Kyle Shanahan hasn't won a Super Bowl just yet. And it's playoffs and anything can happen. And I feel like you're seeing Tyra Smith giving everything to make sure he can stay on the field and do everything that he can, as well as D-Law trying to be that extra boost. Here's what's crazy about D-Law and looking at the numbers. Now, this is not the most tackles he's had in the season. He's had 47 combined, um, 27 solo tackles, and 10 tackles for a loss, along with seven quarterback hits. He's putting pressure, and he's getting them behind the line of scrimmage. And you can't ask for much more than that from your defensive tackle. Um, excuse me, defensive end. He has been an absolute positive tear. And as long as we can continue to get that into the playoffs, if we can stay healthy, pressure is going to be the key along with scoring on the offense. If the Cowboys offense, and we've got problems that we have to worry about on the offense, and one of those is running the football, is we get Hankins back. Hankins will be a major boost on that defensive line. If D-Law can continue to do what he's doing, where he's fully healthy for once, uh, that's huge. 
And maybe, just maybe, we get a few holding calls for Micah Parsons. Um, it's interesting right now being a guy on the outside looking at what's happening with the Eagles right now. The Eagles, it's crazy because they have gone from being the number one seed, you know, the team that everybody believed in and had more faith in than the Cowboys, to now Nick Sirianni is coaching for his job. Let's listen in. In those situations, and so um, it's another learning opportunity for us. And, um, you know, we still have everything in front of us to do what we want to do. Um, still got to clean things up. Um, and there's still a, a sense of urgency to do that, you know. And, and in the end, it's about us um, having our hands on deck to do so. Worry and concern doesn't get any problems fixed. It doesn't. It doesn't fix anything. I say that all the um, time. You know, you getting in there, grinding, job, um, figuring out what the answers are. That's what gets things fixed. Uh, worry and concern does not. Is the locker room still thing? Yes. Oh, you said because you lost the last five. Okay. Lost the team last three. The NFL. Is the NFL? Is any given Sunday? And we got our, we got our teeth punched in today because we you know we got we went out there and we, we thought if they were going to be a push out no it's the NFL it's any given Sunday and that's, that's what makes us one of the greatest sports in the world. No, Nick has not lost a lot. Tim is back and the Eagles are a mess. Lost four of five and no loss to the Cardinals is ever good. Uh, I saw the white elephant thing that they did on the offensive line, Tim. And I'm going to ask you to take a flamethrower to these guys in green. But what is going on? With the defense, because none of the D.C. switching has seemed to make anything better or taken a hold. No, it has. I mean, just for perspective, 21-6 at halftime. You give up four touchdowns in the second half to a team that's really, you know, struggled all year. Now, look, Kyler Murray can be hard to defend, but that's an absolute collapse on the defensive side of the ball. And you look at this time of possession, doubled up basically in time of possession, nearly 40 minutes to 20 minutes which means you're not getting off the field as a defense. And I just wonder a little bit, John, look, they were 10-3 and three when they made a coordinator change. I, I, it's almost like it's maybe created more doubt on that side of the ball by making a move. And so uh, it's, it's hard to, to find a, a spot defensively where you can look at them and say, yeah, I, I think they're, they're getting better mm -hmm. and they're trending in the right direction defensively. All those touchdowns and some of those fourth down conversions, all of it, uh, very concerning for those that root for the folks in dark green. NFC East Division scenarios, Philly lost. The Cowboys control the <laughs> NFC East. I love it. Beat the Commanders next week, they win the division. Eagles, they need a win at the Giants and a Dallas loss, or they will be the five seed. So that's how you got two teams in that division that are going to go to the postseason. What I need to know, Tim, Cowboys, you, do either of those teams have any kind of staying power to go deep into the playoffs? Yeah, well, I would say this. So look, D Dallas playing Washington next week. Washington, I think they've lost seven in a row, 10, of the, 10 out of their last 12. I believe, you know, Dallas wins that football game, which means as the two seed, they're going to get at least a game at home. They get multiple games at home, most likely. And with that being the case, yeah, I think Dallas definitely has some staying power because we've seen what they look like at home. Now, for Philadelphia, if they do end up the five seed, look, they could end up playing, uh, you know, the NFC South champion. Well, it could be Tampa, a team like that. Mm -hmm. And look, do I think with all their struggles, they could go on the road and beat a team like Tampa? Yes, but you also then have to look at, all right, let's say they face Dallas down the road in the postseason. At home. Philadelphia getting Dallas in Philadelphia versus having to play them on the road in Dallas, I think is two, you know, two drastically different situations for the Eagles and their two drastically different situations. Um, it is huge. It was huge for the Eagles with everything on the line, losing to the Cardinals. It still blows my mind away that they lost that game, but Hey, right now, Cowboys have everything right in front of them to take it if they want it and they need a sense of urgency. Time is getting short. There are no guarantees in the NFL that you will be back again. And I appreciate each and every one. Uh, don't forget, if you're thinking about the Commanders game, we have room for you. God!
with this. Such a stupid team. Stupid coaches. They're stupid. <laughs> They're stupid. I can't stand this coaching staff. I want him fired. Oh, he's going. He's he's getting closer to the edge. Nine. You take DeAndre Swift out of the game and you run two bullshit calls. Mm. Nick Sirianni sucks ass. <laughs> oh wow! It's just ridiculous. Oh wow! Philly That's 500 melting down. So stupid. Every week, stupidity. <laughs> I'm so sick of the dumbness. How can you be any dumber? Oh. How can you take DeAndre Swift out? And then you run two plays like that. I oh. mean, you get down. You can't afford to kick field goals. You can't stop them on defense. You have to score touchdowns. You defense stinks. Oh, wow. Philly. It, it can suck my left ass ball. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I can suck <coughs> Philly, no. Just, it's just stupid. Everything really no. about this team is stupid. It's like self-inflicted wound after self-inflicted wound after self-inflicted wound. I'm done with this bullshit. Oh, Philly. It was second and two. Now it's third and nine. You oh, can't Phil. stop shit. <laughs> oh, third and nine. Damn. They jumped off sides, ref. They jumped off sides. Oh my lord! That's a, on the Cardinals. That's on the Cardinals. Hope <sighs> he said damn. Good game, Philia. This locker room is divided. They don't even talk to each other. 